so I already did all my nominees for the game awards and as to who I want to win. But now what I wanted to do actually was go in and 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 sort of predict who I think is going to win. Okay. So luckily for me, uh, if we go to game of the year here, I think this one is pretty easy. Um, Look here. Look, listen. Is that a $50 donation? Thank you for turning it off. Take this shit no more, man. That is a $50 donation that thanked me for turning my camera off. Uh, right. So maybe for the rest of this, I should just leave my camera off. Um, it is what it is. Uh, Sag in the chat. Um, you know, look. I understand I'm not a very attractive individual, but that's kind of messed up. Also, I might put this on YouTube, so I need my face in it. All right, but anyways, so boom. Thank you for that $50 donation. I appreciate that. Don't worry, I'll remove my cam in about, you know, 15 minutes or so. All right, so game of the year. What I voted for was Baldur's Gate 3, and what I think will win is also Baldur's Gate 3. I don't really think this is a competition for the game of the year. I think all of the games here are phenomenal. So when I initially did my game of the year uh, sort of um, uh, 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 nominations there, I hadn't played Alan Wake 2 yet, but I have played Alan Wake 2 now. And I will say, you know, I think the game is a very quality made game. And I think that, you know, it deserves a lot of the nominations that it got. Uh, but, you know, Baldur's Gate 3 is just like on another level. So I think Baldur's Gate 3 was my pick to win this, and I think Baldur's Gate 3 will actually win this. Okay, next up, we have the best game direction. Now for this one, I don't even remember what I voted for on this one, but what I think will win here is either Baldur's Gate 3. Hmm. Ooh, this, one, this one's interesting. This one's interesting. I think it's either Baldur's Gate 3 tears of the kingdom or it could also be alan wake 2 i think it's low key between Baldur's gate 3 and alan wake 2 as to what i think will win but i could also see them giving it to tears of the kingdom because there might be some voters for uh voters fatigue with Baldur's gate 3 in a sense and like since Baldur's gate 3 is like such a clear i think winner for game of the year it i could see it going towards tears of the kingdom uh but yeah I, I'm, I'm gonna say i think Baldur's gate 3 will win this category as well okay next up we have the best narrative so i voted for ff16 here because i think ff16 is the best narrative out of these games that i've played i've not played the phantom liberty uh dlc yet i also have not completed alan wake 2 yet but for me personally i think ff16 is the best story here i think it has no shot in hell at winning this category however i think this one will also it might come down to spider-man 2 or alan wake 2 on this one um i could also see cyberpunk though because i feel like cyberpunk is one of those games that like gets his dick ridden like a lot so I could see them giving it to Phantom Liberty as sort of like a, uh, cause like CD Projekt Red, I feel like was like sort of a darling of the industry. You know what I'm saying? And then the game flopping and then them coming back and releasing a good game just for the, the politics of it. I could see Phantom Liberty sort of etching out there and like winning that. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and lock in. I think Spider-Man 2 will win this. Um, but I, I would not be shocked if Phantom Liberty won it either. Okay, best art direction. Okay, this one, I almost think there's like no going wrong here. I, I don't remember what I went for here. It was either Hi-Fi Rush or Alan or Liza P. But in my personal opinion, I don't think Hi-Fi Rush has a shot at winning. I think it's between Liza P or Alan Wake 2, and I think Alan Wake 2 will win this, personally. Just because Alan Wake 2 seems to be the more critically acclaimed and popular game, you know, similar to how we saw Control a few years ago all over the Game Awards or whatever, I think Alan Wake 2, that kind of has a similar thing going. So I think Alan Wake 2 will win this. But if it was between, I think if it's either Alan Wake 2 or Lies of P, I think both of them deserve it. 
and I wouldn't be mad at either of them winning, but I think I personally voted for Hi-Fi Rush. Okay. Best score in music. Okay, this one, to me, was a wash. I think FF16 completely dog walks every game here, and it's not even remotely a little bit close. This one is the only category I think FF16 has a shot at winning, but again, because of FF16's uh, divisiveness, I, is that even a word? Because of its polarity, is that even, is that the right word? I don't even know. The game is divisive, so I don't think it will actually win this. Uh, for music, I could see Tears of the Kingdom or Hi-Fi Rush taking this. Uh, I think they might give it to Hi-Fi Rush as sort of like a, like a, damn, here, nigga, you know, award type shit, you know what I'm saying? All right, fine, bro, we'll give fucking Xbox something, fuck. Like, do your thing, bitch ass. Like, so Hi-Fi Rush might win it for that reason, and I think it would deserve it, because I think the music there is great. My two options here were FF16 and Hi-Fi Rush, um, but I think it's either going to be Hi-Fi Rush or Tears of the Kingdom. I'll go for Hi-Fi Rush on this. I think Hi-Fi Rush will win. Best Audio Design. Uh, I think Alan Wake 2 will win this. I think Alan Wake 2 will win this. I think I voted for Hi-Fi Rush, but again, when I did this, I had not played Alan Wake 2 yet. Also, I've not played the Dead Space remake, so I can't really speak to that. But between these two, I think, you know, I think I gave it to Hi-Fi Rush. That's the one I want to win, but I think Alan Wake 2 will end up winning this one. And I, and I, think, it, I think it would be very much deserved as well. I think Alan Wake 2 sounds fucking amazing. The, the audio design on that game is crazy good. So I, I can't really hate on it for that. But I mean, the audio aspect is like the whole point of Hi-Fi Rush. You feel me? Like the whole point is the rhythm and the music and how it interacts with the world. And I think the way that the audio integrates in with the overall game design, I think is like so dope. And like, because of that reason, I think that's why it should win. Because like the audio design isn't just a good audio design, like it clearly integrates well with the rest of the game. And I think because of that reason, it should win, but Alan Wake 2 will likely take that one. Okay, best performance. This one I feel extremely strongly about. I think Ben Starr had one of the greatest video game acting performances I've ever heard in my entire life. And I think Ben Starr should absolutely walk away with this award i don't think he will because again ff16 divisive game i think this will go to yuri lowenthal for marvel spider-man 2 not to say that yuri doesn't deserve it but i don't think his performance in this game in spider-man 2 was all that spectacular like that's not to say that he did poorly obviously yuri lowenthal is one of the greatest voice actors of our generation and i think that yuri killed it and i to me like yuri is the voice of spider-man like i think he matches spider-man peter parker's voice so perfectly i think it's a great fit but i don't think this game really uh tested his range or his capabilities as an actor all that much uh you know you had uh what was it the 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 douchey spider-man or whatever the symbiote spider-man where he changed it up a little bit but i don't think it really like it wasn't like that crazy to me personally. So I think Ben Starr had like a wide range of, of acting he had to do for, for FF16. And I think that he was able to display way more of an acting performance than Yuri Lowenthal was. But again, that's not to take anything away from Yuri. Uh, as far as Neil uh, and our playthrough of Baldur's Gate, he tried, he tried uh, killing Balvin over overnight, so Balvin killed him. So I never got to really see <laughs> how good of a voice actor he is, unfortunately, because we packed him up. So it is what it is. Uh, Melanie for Alan Wake 2. I mean, she's good. She's a good voice actor. But again, I haven't beaten the game yet, so I don't know where it goes. But I don't think it's to the level of Ben Starr or Yuri. I have not played Phantom Liberty yet. Uh, so I don't know how Idris Elba performs, but Idris Elba is one of my favorite actors. I have no shadow of a doubt he absolutely murdered that. And then Cameron, I think, is a brilliant actor. I I love Cameron. One of my favorite performances from him is actually uh, as like the Joker in Gotham. I think 
he fucking killed it. I know there's not a lot of Gotham fans out there, but if you've watched Gotham and you saw his portrayal of like what their Joker is, uh, my God, he killed it. But that being said, I've not played Star Wars Jedi Survivor, so I can't really speak to this one uh, myself. So to me, it's between Ben Star and Yuri, and I think Ben Star had just a way more captivating performance. And I think just his role in general allowed for a more captivating performance. I think like if Yuri had a similar uh, script or a similar role to play, I think this would be a lot closer for me. But you know, Ben Star because of that script, because of that story, that 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 uh, all, all of that, I think just Ben Star, he absolutely killed it. And if you haven't, you know, played FF16 yet, you know, you can watch my entire playthrough of it on YouTube. And, uh, you know, it's really, it's it's really captivating. Uh, he killed it. But yeah, Ben Star is my vote. Yuri will probably win. Innovation and accessibility. Uh, this one I can see. I'm gonna go two ways with this one. I think I voted for Street Fighter on this one because of like the modern control implementation and stuff. I don't remember what I voted for here, um, but I think this one is between Forza and Spider-Man. The reason why is because I think Spider-Man 2 is a game that like everybody knows is gonna be super popular. And I think that the people voting for this category probably may not have played Diablo 4 or may even think negatively of Diablo 4. And I think a lot of people don't take fighting games seriously like Mortal Kombat 1 or Street Fighter 6. So I don't think they'll really have a shot. And then it leaves two games left. So I see like the Xbox Game Studios game getting a win just that way. Xbox back, like, damn, fine here. Like have, have an award, like shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? But I can see Forza getting it for that. And also, you know, Forza does have a lot of accessibility features in general. But I think Spider-Man 2 also has a lot of accessibility features as well uh, that are really awesome. And I want to see more innovation in accessibility for video games. But for this category, I think Spider-Man 2 will probably win. Uh, but I could see Forza also getting it. Okay, next up, we have Games for Impact. So this is one that I just have, I've never played either of these games. I'm not even familiar with any of these games. So I clearly, I just have no idea uh, what would win here. So I will just move on. No, no clue there. <clears throat> Rise seems to be a chance on Sonar fan or of Sonar fan. Best ongoing game. Okay, what do I think will win? I think I think Cyberpunk is going to win this. I think it's like kind of it's I don't want to say no contest because like FF14 and Genshin have like really really rabid fan bases. Uh, I could also see them giving it to Fortnite just because Fortnite has been ongoing and relevant for so long like it's kind of hard to deny that um but i think ff14 is i could be wrong because i follow a few people that are into ff14 i think ff14 is in a little bit of a lull period right now so the fan base may not be as like rapidly active right now as they usually are um and i think genshin impact is also in a bad situation right now because they see games like zenless zone zero and Honkai getting a bunch of like quality of life features and getting a bunch of updates and Genshin Impact is sort of being left to die on the wayside. So I think a lot of people are upset with Hoyoverse right now uh, that are Genshin Impact fans. So I don't think Genshin would win it either. I think Cyberpunk is going to win. It's, it's either going to be Cyberpunk or Fortnite in my opinion and I would give it to Cyberpunk. I don't remember what I voted for uh, when I did this. I think I did vote cyberpunk or maybe i voted fortnite i don't really remember but i think cyberpunk will actually win this one uh best community support if destiny 2 wins this i think we all collectively jump out of our windows and land on our and land on our faces thoughts um best community support i think is either baldur's gate or cyberpunk does no man's sky still get updates i mean it has to since it's on this list right so i think it has to uh, but because Cyberpunk has a lot of recency bias, Baldur's Gate as well. I think these two games have a lot of recency bias. I could see either one of these games winning over No Man's Sky because, like, you know, there's been so much conversation about No Man's Sky for like the past five years. 
I think people are tired of it. It's kind of like voters fatigue. I don't, and same thing with FF14. And then of course, Destiny 2, I don't think anybody wants to, uh, I don't think anybody wants to give Bungie any credit with how they just laid off a bunch of fucking people and are just honestly a horrible company to begin with. So I don't think Destiny 2 has any shot at winning this. So I think it's between Cyberpunk or Baldur's Gate. And um, oh, this one's really hard. It, I think this one is literally a a a a, a, a toy cost, a toy cost, a coin toss. <laughs> so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna flip. I'm literally gonna flip a coin. If it's heads, we give it to Baldur's Gate. If it's tails, I give it to Cyberpunk. Let's see. All right, heads. All right. So I think I think Baldur's Gate will win. <clears throat> best indie game okay this one i voted sea of stars for and there's a lot of debate going around about dave the diver being an indie game because it's not indie it has an indie aesthetic but it's published by nexon and if you guys don't know what nexon is they're pretty much like one of the like big gaming conglomerates out there so i mean that's kind of unfortunate uh but I think Dave the Diver will win this. That's not to say that I don't think the other games here are good. I've only played Sea of Stars out of the other games here. Um, but Dave the Diver, I think, is the most popular game with the biggest like fan base. So I think that Dave the Diver will win this. Sea of Stars isn't a good game. Rise, I do not believe that. I now I will say this. As somebody who's played, you know, a fair share of Sea of Stars. I don't think Sea of Stars is as good as everybody was saying. Like people were putting this on the level of like Chrono Trigger or something like that. And it's, I don't just, I just don't think it is. Um, but I think it's very, very fun. And it's a very interesting game. And it's like a nice callback to like older RPGs. I think Sea of Stars is a very good game. I don't think it's like a masterpiece though. Uh, but that being said, I still think Dave the Diver will win this one. Um, and that's just mainly because I haven't played Cocoon, Dredge, or Viewfinder. Best debut indie game. Uh, so I haven't played any of these. The only one I've seen gameplay of is Pizza Tower. And Pizza Tower looks... Pizza Tower looks very cast. I, I, I really want to play that game. So I think I ended up voting for Pizza Tower. I think Pizza Tower will win this one because just because of the fact that I think it's the most popular game here, like a bunch of streamers and shit played Pizza Tower. So I think that like it has that going for it. Uh, so I'm just gonna go Pizza Tower just cause I'm kind of ignorant on this one. Best mobile game. Honkai was what I voted for personally. And I think Honkai will win. I think out of all these games, it's kind of the only one that deserves the W here in my personal opinion. Um, I wish Marvel Snap was on here because I would have voted for Marvel Snap. Um, but yeah, Honkai Star Rail easily deserves this. Um, you say what you will about Hoyoverse games, Honkai Star Rail is pretty gas. Like as a mobile game, a games as a service game, a gotcha game, it's it's very, very high quality. Marvel Snap did win last year, yeah. But I think if it was up to Marvel Snap versus Honkai, I really wonder what would win. I would personally vote for Marvel Snap, but I, there's a very real possibility where Honkai uh, wins that. Uh, best VR slash AR. Yeah, I haven't played any of these. Uh, what do I think will win though? Just off of looks. Probably Resident Evil. Best action game. I really need to play Remnant 2. I really need to play Armored Core. I can't believe Dead Island got a nomination. Like, this is kind of crazy. <laughs> I actually can't believe that. Uh, I know Remnant 1 and 2 are on Game Pass. Uh, I voted for Hi-Fi Rush here because it's the only one that I played. But even then, I still think it has a pretty good chance against these other games. Um, I don't think I would like Armored Core 6 more than Hi-Fi Rush. I think I might like Remnant 2 more than Hi-Fi Rush if I played it. But I think the one that will win here might be Armored Core just because from Soft Dick Riders. Best action adventure game. 
I don't remember what I voted for here. To me, I think this is between Spider-Man 2 and Tears of the Kingdom. I think Tears of the Kingdom should win this and probably will win this. Uh, I don't remember what I voted for here, but if, if I voted for anything that wasn't Tears of the Kingdom, I should change my mind and vote Tears of the Kingdom here. And I also think Tears of the Kingdom will easily win this one. I got Spider-Man winning this one. I think you're crazy. Like, you think, like, with combat, traversal, and puzzle solving, you think Spider-Man 2 wins over Tears of the Kingdom? Yeah, I think that's kind of crazy. I think as an adventure game, like, Zelda feels way more adventurous than Spider-Man 2 does. And that's not to, like, take anything away from Spider-Man 2, but, like, Tears of the Kingdom, even though I only played it for, like, maybe, like, 10 hours or so, it's still... I mean, the creativity you have in that game is just way, way above. I don't think it deserves it, but Sony Ponies might show out. I think you forgot about the the, the Nintendo Cops. They also out there. I think Tears of the Kingdom has a very good shot at winning this, and I think it will win this. I still need to play this game, too. man. I think this game is actually on sale right now for $30. I need to play this. Best RPG. Okay, I gave this to FF16. I think, but Baldur's Gate 3 just wins. Like, Baldur's Gate 3 is not the best RPG of this year. It's probably the best RPG like ever made. Spider-Man 2 is bad. That's cat. Spider-Man 2 is not bad. I am a Spider-Man hater. I was a Spider-Man PS4 hater, but I cannot hate on Spider-Man 2. Okay, and if you're watching this on Omega Pro Plus, my entire uh, Spider-Man Two playthrough will be getting uploaded momentarily be on the lookout for that all the parts will be going up but uh yeah look you're crazy spider-man 2 is very good i don't think spider-man 2 is a masterpiece i gave spider-man 2 like a real solid like eight i gave spider-man 2 like a real like a real solid eight maybe like yeah i gave it like a solid eight i gave it a solid eight i only pray starfield doesn't win bro you don't have to worry about that starfield has no shot at winning when you hopping back on Monster Hunter, uh, never worry. Best fighting game. I gave this to Street Fighter VI. Uh, I also think... I can, oh, Mortal Kombat got a lot of fans, though. I think Mortal Kombat has the normies gripped by the throat. Uh, damn. I really wonder what's going to win this. Nickelodeon is not winning. Be so for real. Uh, I'm going to personally give it to Street Fighter 6, and I also think Street Fighter 6 will win, personally. I think Street Fighter 6 is taking this award. <clears throat> Spider-Man 2 is my goatee because I'm a fanboy. Ugh. I mean, more power to you, I guess. I don't know what God of Rock is. I have not heard of this. I also not heard of Pocket Bravery. Best family game. I think I gave it to Mario Bros. Wonder, and I also think Mario Bros. Wonder will win. But it, to me, in second place was Party Animals. I have not played Sonic Superstars yet, but I heard horrible things about it, so I probably won't. Um, And I'm not a Pikmin fan. I'm sorry, this game looks fucking corny. <laughs> I have no idea how people play this game, why people like this game. Maybe I gotta just like try it and lock in and like really just try it out, but those games look so garbage. And, uh, yeah, I haven't even heard of this Disney Illusion game. It looks good, though. Like, I like the art style. I think Party Animals is winning this one. If you think Party Animals is going to win over a mainline, like, Mario game, I think you're crazy. If it does win, that would be awesome. I think Party Animals is really fun. You know, but I just don't see it winning over a mainline Mario game. Like, that's that's crazy. I think Mario sweeps this easily. Best sim slash strategy game. I mean, Fire Emblem Engage off of the strength of it being a Fire Emblem game, but I actually did not like Engage that much. Like, I think I gotta like, I think I just gotta like lock in and really try to play Engage. Like, I just gotta lock, but like, it was, oh my God, I don't know. Like, I just like Three Houses so much more, but I I hear that the, that the combat in Engage gets way better and like overtakes Three Houses later on. But it's like mainly the narrative and the characters that I'm just not jacking, man. How far did I get? Uh, I think it was only like a few hours. Like, I don't know. Like, 
dude, the dialogue, man. Like, all, I don't like any character in that fucking game, man. Just don't like any character in that game. Uh, but apparently the gameplay is really good. Maybe I got to suck it up for the gameplay alone. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. I might have to force myself to lock in and play Engage, but we'll see. I just started emulating um, Awakening on my fold. And uh, Awakening already has way more interesting characters than Engage did. Alan Wake 2 uh, has like chapters or something. So it's like some shit like that. Best sports slash racing game. Uh, you know what's crazy? We watched that one Watch Mojo video where they gave this like the most mid game of the year type shit. Uh, so it's funny that it's on here. I mean, Forza Motorsport will win this just because it's an Xbox Game Studios game. It's the one here with the highest reputation. I think it's almost impossible that Forza loses this category. So I think Forza will win this category. I don't even think I don't even think it's going to be close, to be honest. This is going to be one of those ones they announce the winner off stream type shit. Did you try Hot Wheels? No, but like I didn't even know this game came out and I think a lot of people didn't know either. Best multiplayer game. What did I vote for here? I think Street Fighter 6 wins this. So Baldur's Gate 3, with all of its updates, became a better multiplayer game. But, like, to me, I don't consider Baldur's Gate, like, a multiplayer game, if that makes sense. But it's also worse because on release, when Baldur's Gate came out, like, you could not consider, like, let's say, for example, me and Balvin, like, had a, a, a story together. And, like, we literally, we brought Fats in for one of our sessions for, like, the first month or so of the game, like, we could not play without Fats' character in our party. They did end up removing that. And like now you can remove people and drop them from your online game uh, at will, which is better. But like, there's just still some quirks about Baldur's Gate 3. I also feel like if you're not like the, if you're like player two, for example, in Baldur's Gate 3, like you really do feel like a side character. Like whoever initiates the conversation is pretty much the one playing the story. And if you're not the one initiating that conversation, you just kind of get fucked. So, like, I really, I, like, when we play Baldur's Gate, I pretty much feel like a side character to Balvin's story. And I think that, like, is just, that sucks. Can't you just switch off? No, you idiot. Because, like, you, then, like, you guys are, like, taking turns pretty much. I'm like, who's like the main character or whatever. And there's like no continuity there. Like, like th they'll treat you guys as if like, you're like the, as if you're like the same person. Like, I really wish it was like more of a, I wish the, that's the only flaw I can give Baldur's Gate is that I wish the multiplayer was like more like engaging for both players. If that makes sense. That's not to say that it's not engaging for both players, but just that like, if you're player two, like you just feel like a player two, you know what I mean? It, you, it feels like you're tagging along to somebody else's experience. Uh, so I would probably give this to Street Fighter Six, And I also think Street Fighter Six will probably win this one, but I could also see Party Animals winning that one. The online for Mario Bros. Wonder kind of sucks because you're not playing like the levels together. You know, like everything is independent of one another. And that's like the worst thing about Mario uh because like whatever i'm doing on my screen is like not happening on the other person's screen if that makes sense i don't know how local multiplayer is because you know i have no friends but for online multiplayer it's not the best best adaptation i gave this to the last of us um i haven't seen any of the other ones but i think the last of us was like a phenomenal series even if i had watched the other ones I really doubt something is going to overtake The Last of Us for me because like that series was just really good. I love the way it 
adapted and expanded on the world of the last of us from the original playstation game i thought it was amazing so very big fan of the last of us on hbo i thought that was fire most anticipated game i mean ff7 rebirth right it's i mean it's got to be i think ff7 rebirth will win too like i don't even like it's it's going it's going to win I think the, the, one of the things that's like keeping me from being as hyped about Hades 2. Yo, Basura, thank you for the 25 months. I am very yeah. excited for Hades 2. Hades 1 is my favorite indie game of all time. One of my favorite games of all time. I love Hades 1. Um, but when it releases, it will be early access, which kind of like removes some of that hype for me a little bit. But FF7 Rebirth, I'm fully locked in for uh, Star Wars Outlaws, I want to see more of that. We'll see. Um, and uh, of course, I'm not a Yakuza fan. And Tekken should be pretty good, too. I'm excited for Tekken. I'll be playing that in January. Uh, but FS7 Rebirth is going to be that guess. Hades 1 also released in early access. The difference is, is that, like, I feel like Supergiant has had this level of popularity that it's never had before. Right? So, like... Yeah, it was fine to release Hades 1 in early access because they weren't as, like, popping or, like, mainstream. You know what I mean? Like, nobody was excited for Hades. Well, that's not true because Supergiant had a lot of fans. But, like, you know, it didn't have the motion that it has now. Like, so for Hades 2 to come out, like, a sequel to, like, what is considered the best, uh, the best, like, uh, indie game of all time, pretty much. When one of the best games of all time, period. Like, to have that be early access, it kind of sucks. Like, imagine if you waited all this time for Silk Song, and then, like, it released in early access, and, it, like, the full game isn't out. Like, that would fucking suck. Um, But, you know, we'll see. But I give this to FF7 Rebirth. Content creator of the year, L, because I'm not here. I don't really like any of these creators. Not on a personal level, like, just their content. I haven't really watched many of them anyways. Best esports game, don't matter. They're all garbage. <clears throat> Best esports athlete, uh, fuck esports. Wait a minute. Was there somebody I actually know? I'm going to give it to Imperial Howl for Apex Legends, W. Faker will probably win that one, though. Uh, Yeah, don't know. Esports coach, yeah, don't know. Esports event. I voted for EVO 2023, but I feel like League of Legends always wins it. Like, doesn't Worlds, like, win it every time? And the thing is, like, even though I am a League of Legends, like, sort of detractor, the production value on those League tournaments is crazy. Like, the, it's, it's just undeniably very good. Like, even as a spectator that doesn't really know... Uh, that doesn't really know what's going on. It is a visual spectacle to watch the League of Legends uh, uh, World Championship. But obviously, I would give it to Evo, but League will probably win. And that's everything. Those are my uh, Game Awards 2023 predictions. Let me know what your predictions are in the comments section down below. Follow me live on Twitch. Check me out on Twitter. All the links and shit like that in the description. And uh, yeah, thank you.